Welcome to Ditch the Classroom. This is your host, Ariana Vernier, and I'm so excited that you're here. I'm a teacher turned business coach who is so passionate about helping fellow mamas like you ditch the classroom and pursue your big, hairy, scary dreams. Imagine a life where you could still impact the world, but do so while following your passions and spending more time with your babies. In Ditch the Classroom, we'll explore ways you can do just that. Myself, guest experts, and amazing teachers who have also built a successful business will share tools, tips, and resources to help you ditch the classroom too. Are you ready? Here we go. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Ditch the Classroom podcast. We have a special guest on with us today. Her name is Sarah Ann Jimenez. She's a life coach who focuses on life balance in both your personal life and business, as well as helping you to shift your mindset and really believe in yourself. So welcome, Sarah. <laughs> ah, Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here and so honored that you're having me on today. Yeah, of course. So in today's episode, we're going to be chatting a lot about how to come out of the hot mess mom mode and what that journey looked like for you and how you help the people you serve do that. But before we jump into that, can you just kind of introduce yourself and tell a little bit about where you are now and how you got there? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, so like Ariana said, my name is Sarah. Um, so I am a wife to a wonderful husband and we decided to start a family a couple years ago. My son Roman will be three in this coming November. Um, so it took me about a year and a half before I realized how I was living in air quotes, the identity of hot mess mama. And not that there's anything I want to say bad about being what people call a hot mess mom. Um, Cause I still have my moments. I still have my days. It's not that it's necessarily a bad thing, but I realized about a year and a half in that I was taking on that full identity and using it as kind of a crutch or an excuse to everything to just be a mess in my life. As far as like my house, um, just chores and daily uh, goals, like just little things, you know, my business, everything just kind of felt like a mess. And I, I'm one of those people that, you know, before I had a child, I, number one, I work in the corporate world. So I was working in leadership and management. And, you know, I was working up the corporate ladder. And then I had a child and I stepped on to part time, stepped out of leadership. And that was a big shift for me. But, you know, I like looking good. I like dressing up, not necessarily in heels. I'm not super bougie and fancy here. But you know, I do like dressing up. I like feeling good about myself. I don't want to be in sweatpants and a t-shirt all day. It's just not who I am. And again, I'm not super fancy, but certain things about, you know, me before I had a child had changed after I had my son. But I also never got back to what I loved about dressing up or putting on makeup, whatever that means for you. You know, for me, it's like, maybe eyeliner and lip gloss or mascara. Again, very simple, but it made a huge difference. Um, even taking a shower, you know, I think we struggle after we become uh, mothers, taking a shower, like that's a real thing, you know? So yeah, so that's kind of about a year and a half in, I started realizing that I was taking on this new identity of just being a hot mess mom, using that as an excuse and kind of just embracing that a little too much to where I found that I felt very unbalanced in my life in many different areas. And I didn't want to be a hot mess mom. I did not want to live in that identity anymore. And so basically I had to start coming out of that, you know, first with the mental work and then with some actionable steps and, you know, a couple different things uh, kind of going from there. That's kind of where my, my journey started with my hot mess momhood, I guess you could say. Yeah. I think that's something we can all relate to. I mean, I know I can relate we prioritize our kids and we put them first and then all everything that that helps us feel like us gets put to the side and you just get stuck in like this mom identity and nothing else and i think it's really important to keep those aspects that always made you feel like you at least some of them especially when you're stepping into motherhood absolutely and and i'm a big you know, I'm a big believer and we go through obviously not being a mom, 
you know, to being a mom, there's, there's a big change. You, you are now responsible for this, you know, human and their life and raising them to the best of your ability. And, you know, but while still maintaining being, you know, if you're married or if you're, you have a significant other, you know, still maintaining being a significant other or wife or, and, you know, like you said, those things get pushed to the side. And then now you have this human. And I think that there's, there's grace. There's a grace period too, of just learning the new normal of, um, especially as a, if it's your first time. So for me, I knew that things were going to change, but then when they did change, I was like, okay, I was, I wasn't intentional about trying to figure out what my new normal and how to feel myself again was. And I just put myself on the back burner. So I think a lot of moms, naturally we do that as caregivers and, you know, because of how much we love our children and, and our significant others, we take care of everybody first, but we forget to reflect on, okay, where is my identity? Who am I, you know, who am I, who do I want to be? And what am I working towards for myself? you know, mentally, emotionally, physically, whatever that looks like uh, as as a parent. Yeah, I definitely agree. So why do you think this hot mess mom mode is so popular with moms and their identity? So I think with every mom, it's different. And again, you know, there's, I'm always want people to know that again, it's, if you were good with like, Hey, I'm just a hot mess mama. That's fine. You know, hot mess mom means a little, I think it's different for every mom, every parent. For me, it meant, okay, well, I can't schedule time to work out. Well, my life is just a hot mess. You know, I'm, I'm a mom. Like I have his schedule is, you know, we were not on this super like strict schedule, especially when he was an infant. Like he, his naps were not the typical, some infants, my friends would have kids that would sleep for like two hours. I would get 30 minutes if I was lucky. So jealous of those moms. <laughs> oh my gosh. Tell me about it. I'm like, listen here, my child, I, I could call it. I would call it to the TV, we would drop him off um, in the nursery at church. And I'd be like, he fell asleep at nine 30. He'll be up at 10 o'clock. And they were like, Oh, okay. And it w- I would pick him up from nursery and they would be like, yeah, he woke up at 10 o'clock. You called it. I'm like, I know. He is so like 30 minutes was all I got. So for me, you know, hot mess momhood was just like, oh, well, I can't find a rhythm. I can't find, you know, balance because I'm a mom now and I'm just a hot mess and my hair doesn't look good and I don't have time to get dressed and I don't have time to do X, Y, and Z. I can't mop my floors or I can't sweep or vacuum or, you know, everything was so challenging. That's just was my mindset was it's all challenging now because I'm a hot mess and hot messes just don't have it together. And you wear, you know, crazy hair all day, no makeup, which again, if you're not in the makeup, it's totally fine. I'm not even a huge person when it comes to makeup, but you know, I didn't take any time to get ready. I didn't take any time to do stuff for myself. If I was, you know, running errands, I look like I just rolled out of bed and that's not deep down. That's not who I am. But in that season, I was, that's what I felt like. So because of that, I had just accepted it. And I think I didn't know where to start. So I think that's why I was like, well, I heard other moms talking about being a hot mess mom. And I was like, oh, well, that's just me too, then. Like, I'm just a hot mess mom. So I think that it's just accepted, you know, in a way to make us feel better, especially if we don't want to be the hot mess mom, but it makes us feel better because now we can kind of lean on that and say, well, my life is a mess because I'm a hot mess mom. That's just how it is. And so somehow we've just accepted that as being like kind of an excuse or a crutch to just be Mm -hmm. like, oh, well, this is the way things are. Yeah. And like you said, if you're one of those people who just kind of thrives on a little bit of the chaos, that's fine. But if you don't, there are ways to come out of that and to conquer and feel like you're more put together and not stuck in the hot mess mom mode. So can you tell us a little bit about how we can overcome these thoughts and actions? So I actually, I'm really big on acronyms. And um, so I actually had come up with a, a word and the word is react. And for each letter, of course, I have something that kind of talks about that. So, um, so re- we want, I want you to react to 
realizing that identity, right? So R stands for recognize the identity that you have taken and accepted. So really realizing and recognizing that, okay, this is what I believe now about myself and I've accepted this. So, okay. So just kind of recognizing that identity, right? So E is for evaluate where you want to be and who you need to be to get there. So do you want to stay in hot mess mom mode? I mean, if you do, that's fine. Like no judgment here. That's totally cool. If you love PJs all day and your hair in a bun and no makeup, that's great. Go you. I mean, more power to you. I personally, with my personality type, with who I am to be pro- and how to be productive, it was not good for me. So evaluating. Uh, a is for actively create habits that will start to change your current beliefs about yourself. And that is mentally and physically. So I had to start creating micro habits and habit and started habit stacking and I, I have a chart that I actually, you know, have every day that I look at and look at the different habits that I've wanted to, that I'm working towards creating for myself. And it's an ongoing thing. So, you know, which we can go into that later. But uh, so actively creating habits. And then C is create a short and long term game plan to put into consistent action. So coming up with a little bit of a plan. I'm a planner personally, that just comes naturally to me. I love to plan it out. I love to plan. I love planning everything out. I have a planner, I have colored notebooks. I have pretty, you know, pretty notebooks for different things, different colored pens. I live in color. That's my jam. And so make it fun for yourself too. Um, But creating a short-term and long-term game plan. And then T is take radical responsibility for your results. Take action. So once you come up with that plan, so once you've recognized the identity that you've taken and accepted and you evaluate, okay, is that where you want to be and who you want to be or not? And if it's not, you know, who do you need to be to get to where to that person that you want to actually be? Right. Maybe that's a sexy mom. Maybe that's the the hardworking, you know, maybe you work in corporate, you know, I work in corporate part time. Um, but maybe you work full time, you know, there's so many different avenues. And again, this is different for every single mom. So um, actively create those habits, start changing the beliefs about yourself, create the short term and long term game plan, and then take radical responsibility for your results. So know that you have to be consistent, you have to take action on those plans, you can think about it all day long. But if you don't take those small steps, and I'm talking very small steps, my the way that I started was like making the bed every morning. That sounds ridiculous, but that was huge for me was creating that habit of making the bed just to give you guys an example. But yeah, so react, that would be my first thing is just react to it. I think that is so helpful. And I'm going to include this in the show notes for everybody who's listening. So you can go back and and see what each of these represent. But let me summarize again. So R is recognize what's going on in your life that you might want to change. E is to evaluate what needs to change, what you're happy with and what you're not. A is to actively create habits and stack habits on top of each other so that they're easier to accomplish. C is to create a game plan, both short-term and long-term. And T T is to take radical responsibility and take action to fix these things that you want to fix. Perfect. Yes, Yes. So What would you say are some daily non-negotiables to help find balance in your daily personal or even your business life? So I'm a firm believer that if your personal life is not in check, then at some point your business life is going to suffer or even maybe affect you personally, right? So a lot of moms have, uh, like they break down, they have, you know, mentally and emotionally, or they get burnt out or Maybe you have what I would call hustle anxiety. So I also on the side for fun, I do run an activewear line. I sell activewear. And for me, I started getting to this point where I was just hustling so hard and everything was not quite balanced as far as my priorities were just not in check. And so I would just get this anxiety of like, oh, okay, hold on. Oh my gosh, I gotta, I need to do this. I need to do that. I need to do this. And it just became this, anxiousness about everything. And it it really affected me in so many different ways. So I would say a couple non-negotiables. First thing is, and this is what I suggest as a coach, 
if, you know, if we're just talking as friends, I always tell people I have a little sticky note. Um, I actually order them off Amazon and they're colored. Of course, they're bright neon and blue and pink and all these different colors. So I can pick whatever colorful sticky I want for the day. And I pick one of my colored pens and I write down the day. So maybe it's Monday, right? I'll put Monday on the top. And then I write personal on one side and I write business on the other side. And I put a squiggly line down the middle. So I write on there what I'm going to be doing for that day and what do I want to accomplish? And I keep it very simple. And when I say what you want to accomplish, it might be in your personal life, do that return to the store. Like it might be that simple or do one load of laundry, you know, do two loads of laundry, whatever it is that your, your daily personal just chores and, and whatever it looks like. And then for business, I would do the same. I'd keep it very simple. So maybe I need to reach out to a client, check in on somebody, or maybe I need to do an Instagram reel because that helps my uh, business and my visibility, right? So very simple, simple tasks. And I put that on my, and then as I do them throughout the day, now I put the sticky note in my kitchen on my kitchen counters, but I see it all the time. And then as I do them, I cross it off with a pen and check mark it. And there is just the weird satisfaction of being able to cross that off your list. And it does this, it gives you like this mental ping in your brain. of like, yes, I accomplished that. If you're anything like me, you thrive off of accomplishment and crushing goals and, you know, making a plan and executing. That is just my jam. A challenge. I live, I thrive and live off of challenges. So I challenge myself every day. These are the things I want to get done. And I don't overload myself either. So I would say that's probably my biggest tip is, to have a system, something, whether it's a pretty sticky notepad or colorful stickies like me, and write it down every single day, put it somewhere that you can see it so that you don't forget because let's be real, mom brain is a thing. We get distracted five million times a day. We have this little human who wants our attention all the time. And maybe you need to get that load of laundry done, but that's not on the forefront of your mind. So a little reminder on a bright neon sticky pad and knowing that once you get that done, you get to check it off, you'd be surprised how effective it can be to get you like, oh, that's right. I need to do that. And I'm telling you, that has been a game changer in my daily habits and chores and personal, in personal and my business life. I love that. And that's something I kind of do something very similar where I pick my daily three and it's three things that I, I have a goal to get done both in personal and then three in business. And I mean, that's six things. That's not, that doesn't, to me, it doesn't feel too overwhelming. And then I feel great once I accomplish those things. And if I get anything extra done, that's not on the list. Fantastic. If not, then I still feel like I was productive and I did three more things to push myself farther along to my end goal. Exactly. Yeah. And you know what? Something I started doing is if let's say I do something extra for the day, like whether it's a, a chore, like an extra chore, I would write it down. Like it wasn't on my list, but I did something like um, maybe today wasn't the day to dust, but I went ahead and dusted because I had a few minutes, right? I'll write it down and cross it off. Yep. I do the same I don't thing. Know. <laughs> it makes me feel so good. And then also, you know, for those of you that, you know, have a significant other or husband or, you know, when they come home or, you know, I don't know, my husband does work from home. So it's a little different, but I can tell him now because no joke, if I didn't write it down, I would forget what I did for the day. So now I can look at my list and say, look at what I did today. I accomplished X, Y, and Z. And I feel confident about it. I feel good about that. I was productive. And he also gets to hear like, cause you know, they don't always see the little things that we do. Right. Um, you know, that's just the reality. Let's just be honest, men do not notice those tiny details that we as women notice and do and accomplish. And so it's a great way to one, have that open line of communication, reminding him that, Hey, I am not just sitting on my butt all day. Like I got some things done on top of keeping this little human alive. You're welcome. (laughs) (laughs) That is this one big thing I I love about having that sticky note reminder because it reminds myself And I can have that conversation with my husband to let him know what I've accomplished. You know, it just makes me feel great. Yeah, I love that. And I definitely recommend implementing something like that that works for you. I think that's that's a great tip. So what do you see as one of the biggest resources for 
helping moms get out of that um, hot mess mom mode? So obviously hiring a coach is a great start. Uh, That is something that I started with. Um, I started recognizing that I had some hustle anxiety. I started recognizing that, you know, I just wasn't like where I wanted to be mentally and emotionally. So I did hire a coach. She was a specifically a mindset coach. Um, I would say she was a mindset and life coach. So that was amazing just because, you know, one, you have, let's, let's, you know, think about this for a second. So I love talking to people and I have some great friends in my life and I have an amazing husband who's a great listener. And, you know, when do we actually have time, you know, as busy wives, moms, you know, who probably either work or run a business, or maybe you're just a stay at home mom that runs the household, right? Maybe you have multiple children. When do we actually sit down and get to have dedicated time with someone to really share our feelings, bounce ideas, work on our mindset, talk about what's going through our mind and what we're struggling with or what we want to work on or what our goals are. Like, when do we actually do that? It doesn't happen very often. Um, so that was, that's one, one component of hiring a coach is you have a dedicated time with, you know, with me, as for example, if you hire me, you have a dedicated, you have dedicated time with me so that we can go over, okay, you know, I mean, what are you struggling with? What are you working towards? Um, you know, being a hot mess mom, like, what does it mean to come out of that for you individually? And how can we get there? What steps can we implement that are not going to be, quote, unquote, hard, right? So we don't want to make it, we're not going to have a list of 30 things to do tomorrow so that you can just step into your new you. But we are going to work on consistently and slowly kind of finding balance in different areas of your life and things that are important to you, so that you can break free from feeling like that hot mess all the time. Again, we all have our days. I still have my days and that's okay. But it doesn't mean that I'm going to be stuck there forever. It doesn't mean that I have to live a life of feeling like, oh, well, I'm just a hot mess. Like, no, I am not a hot mess. I, I don't have everything perfect, but I am kicking butt. I crush goals. I'm an amazing mom. I'm a great wife. And you know what? My house is actually clean and this is amazing and I love it. So, you know, hiring a coach is important. Um, you know, I do do free discovery calls. We'll cut that out. Sorry. We'll do that. next. No, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, I agree. 100% hiring a coach is one of the best things you can do. I know sometimes 99.9% of the time, the investment piece is scary and investing in yourself, I feel like is so much harder for moms because we feel like, oh, we should, we, we could put this towards like the kids stuff. They need stuff. And, but when we invest in ourselves, we're making ourselves better so we can be better mothers for them. So I am 100% in that boat with you that hiring a coach in your life, in your business, for your mindset, anything is so, 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 so valuable. Yeah, absolutely. So this has been so helpful and I really think that my listeners are going to connect with this because I know I do personally um, and I've been in that mode before. And like you said, there's still days where I'm like, what am I doing with my life? Um, But there are ways to get out of it if you want to get out of it. So this has been so, so helpful. And I just appreciate you coming on with us so much. I do want to ask you my favorite question that I ask on every episode because as you know, most of my listeners are teachers who are looking to quit teaching um, so that they can be home with their babies and spend more time with them. So my question is, if someone wanted to start their digital classroom journey and quit teaching, but they just felt too overwhelmed, what would you tell them? So I am a big believer in being a good steward of your finances. So I would say to start, you know, do you have a budget? Like most people don't, and this is coming. I'm listen. I'm preaching the choir here because I have a budget now, but for years I did not look at where my money was going. I did not look at how much I was spending on groceries. I did not look at much. I did not look at how much I was spending on eating out or spending on clothes, whatever it was. You know, don't tell my husband. <laughs> so I think start by really, if you don't have a budget, sit down with whoever in the household is bringing in income and evaluate your budget. Really look at, okay, where is the money? And you, and it's very simple. You actually don't even start with like, 
you actually don't start with making a budget right away. You actually start by evaluating. I'm all about evaluating everything first so that you can figure out where you want to go, right? So if you don't know where you're at in your finances, how are you going to make a budget or plan, right? So I would say start with a budget, start with um, figuring out where where you're at in your budget, like what's going out, what's coming in, all those things, right? And there's so many different resources for that. You know, Dave Ramsey is a great resource. Um, there's, um, I do have a program that goes through, it's like a three-week program that we actually go through, like breaking that down. So if you're interested in that, you can get on a free discovery call with me on that. Starting with that and then kind of going from there and saying, okay, well, this is where I'm at and this is where I want to be. So what do I need to do to get to either that comfortable income or, you know, get to a place where I can say I can walk away from my job and these are the, you know, maybe these are where we need to cut corners or maybe we need to pay off some debt first, you know, how to kind of create a game plan for yourself. So that it's not overwhelming when you're making these decisions of, okay, maybe I went from full time to part time when we had my son. I had a plan for that. So I actually, the goal was we were going to be debt free when we had my son. And so the only thing we would have debt wise would be our, our home. So I paid off my car a month before we had my son because I just kept pouring extra money that any, any extra funds I would pour into the car because I knew that I was going to take an income cut. Not only was I stepping out of leadership, but I was going from 40 hours a week to now 25 hours, 24 hours a week. And that's a big, you know, I get, I get paid by the hour. So that's a big cut in my monthly take home income. But you know what, when I did that, I didn't even notice the only difference that it changed was my car payment. And I didn't even notice um, that I had, I was making less money because I had a plan for it. And then I started a business. I did start my, uh, my active wear boutique. You know, when I started that, if you're interested in starting a small business, you know, whether that's direct sales, with a little marketing, or maybe you want to create something, you know, having a game plan for that, like, what's it going to cost to get started up? You know, what's the investment look like? And having a game plan just going forward with, okay, you know, most of it just breaks down numbers. Like, all right, this is what I, this is where I'm at. This is where I want to be. So what do I got to do in between to get to that point? And just knowing your numbers. I think that is like the biggest thing with that brings stress. It's like, we don't really know. So then it stresses us out even more because we're not actually sure like, well, how much money do I need to make to get to be able to step down to part-time or leave my job? Or how much money are we spending eating out? Like, can we cut corners somewhere? You know, most people don't know. So I think that's probably my biggest thing to alleviate that is, you know, start with, do you have a budget? Have you evaluated where your money's going? You know, where do you want to be? What's it going to take to get there? And then if you want to start a business, evaluating what's it going to cost you? And how can you how can you pour into that business? And what do you need to make? And, and kind of just take it step by step, honestly. Yeah, I agree. And I know for me, having a budget seemed overwhelming and like it was going to be more stressful. But actually, once I got married to my husband, we sat down and made a budget and mapped out where the money was going. I feel so much better. And I'm actually sometimes I get on him, like if one of our things in our budget, one of our columns in our budget goes in the red a little bit. I'm like, no, we're not sticking to it. We got to stick to it. So it is really helpful. And it's something you can always tweak if you find that you need, you need a little bit more in one category than maybe another. It's not something that has to always stay the same. I think that's kind of how I felt when I first started with a budget and no, it's supposed to fluctuate with your life and what you need and really reflect your values and what you want to be spending your money on. Absolutely. Yeah. It it changes, you know, it's going to change periodically. You know, our budget shifted when my son started school, you know, because he's in like pre pre K. So we have to budget for that. And so a couple things, you know, we tweak a little bit and that's okay. And you know what, in the beginning, I'm going to be, I'm going to be so real with you in the beginning. I went over my allowance all the time. In fact, I still sometimes do, (laughs) but, 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 you know, I at least also know, like I do most of the grocery shopping, right? So my husband hates grocery shopping. So I started tracking the groceries. Well, guess what? Now I can tell him like, 
well, okay, this is what we've spent this month. Well, guess what? Look at how much we spent on groceries. He didn't know. He had no idea the cost of food because he doesn't do the grocery shopping. So it takes the stress off of me because instead of floundering of like, oh my God, maybe it's because I overspent on my allowance. Like, no, it's not. It's because we spent $800 in groceries this month. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Food is that expensive. Exactly. So it, it definitely takes off a lot of stress off of both parties if you know where the money's going. And then like, like you said, it's going to change and that's okay too. You know, starting somewhere is what's important. Yep. Yeah, definitely. So can you share any of your resources with my listeners that you think would be beneficial to them? So as far as you know, there's so many different places that I feel like you can go. There's different podcasts. There's, um, you know, you can jump on a free discovery call with me uh, and we can kind of go over, you know, what do you have going on in your life? Do you feel like, do you feel like you want to come out of that hot mess mom stage of, you know, living in an unbalanced life? Do you feel like your mindset's off? Like, where is it that you feel unbalanced? And like I said, we, I do 20 minute discovery calls completely free so that we can kind of evaluate and I can get to know you, you can get to know me to see if, you know, are we, can we work together? Cause just going to put it out there. You know, if you've never hired a coach, not every coach is going to be what you need. Mm-hmm. Even if they think that you need them, if that makes sense. So, you know, getting to, if you don't know the coach, that's why I do discovery calls. Cause I want people to get to know kind of where I'm coming from. And, and I want to know about them too. Are they willing to, are you willing to put in the work? You know, are you willing to step out of that identity and move forward with finding balance and, and really, you know, walking, stepping closer and closer to your purpose and in this life or, or, you know, whatever goals you're working towards, that's where um, the discovery call is really, really important because I want to make sure that we are a good fit for each other, you know, uh, making sure our values are the same and, and all those good things. So I would definitely say, you know, let me know if you want to get on a discovery call. Um, I do have, I'm going to give you my email, which I think we're going to include in the notes, correct? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So Sarah Ann J6, that's S-A-R-A-A-N-N-J6 at gmail.com. If you want to book a discovery call with me, um, we can have a you know quick conversation, kind of figure out where you're at and where you want to be and you know really focus and dive in on having a game plan for you that's going to, you know, it's going to take you long term too. I'm really big about actionable steps. And I want to make sure that, you know, when you do coaching with me, it's not just, oh, here, okay, does your feelings, okay, I'm here to listen and talk to you through them. No, like, I want to give you actionable steps. I want to give you a game plan. So that when we are done with our coaching, you know, sessions, whatever that looks like for you, I want to make sure that you walk away knowing what you're going to be doing next, even without me, and that you don't need me. I want to empower you as a as a woman and as a mom to say, you know what, I needed a little bit of clarity. I needed a little bit of just kind of understanding where I'm at, but now I know where I'm going and I know how I'm going to get there step by step. And it's going to change along the way, but I want to empower you to be able to step into redesigning yourself and your identity and your life as a, as a new mom, you know, and really working towards that even after we are done. Perfect. So for the, those listening, I'll make sure to have the email in the show notes. So if you're ready to book that free discovery call with Sarah, you can do so by sending her a quick email. Well, Sarah, it has been such a pleasure having you on today. This has been so awesome. And I know that my listeners are really going to connect with you. Where can they find you, come and interact with you and be your new best friend? Awesome. Awesome. And thank you so much again for having me. This has been so amazing and I'm so passionate. And so I want to be all, I want to be your hype girl. That's, that's my jam. I want to help kind of get you through that season of life. And I want to be your hype girl and your cheerleader along the way, but I also want to, you know, be your coach and kind of let give you some direction and kind of help you help you with that. So you can connect with me on Instagram. Um, my name on Instagram, you can search for, and it's all spelled out is balanced life with love. So I'm, that's a short way of saying what I kind of live by, you know, having a balanced life with love. Honestly, that's, that's my jam. So on Facebook, my name is Sarah Ann Jimenez. You're going to have to put the Ann in there because there's a lot of 
Sara Jimenez <laughs> on Facebook. So it's S A R A space A N N and then Jimenez with a J. So J I M E N E Z. Perfect. Well, thank you again so much. And for those listening, make sure to go connect with share with Sarah, show her some love and yeah, just thank her for coming on with us. I cannot wait to see y'all next week on next week's episode. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Before you go, make sure you take a minute to subscribe to the show, leave a rating and review, and check out the show notes for a free gift to help you ditch the classroom. If you loved today's episode, can you help me share the message by taking a screenshot, tagging me on Instagram at ariana.vernier, and sharing it with your friends so we can help more mamas ditch the classroom and follow their dreams. Until next week, y'all, keep following the dreams that were placed in your heart so you too can ditch the classroom.